this is the low level talk like really low level like i don't know it's the most technical talk on this conference so if you're not comfortable with that yeah just check your choices the title is why because i can stories from cryptography oh it doesn't work again Do you know what the blockchain is? Do you want to be rich? <laughs> yeah. You know the blockchain is built on encryption, don't you? I heard that the crypto cryptocurrency is a new gold. You know what the gold is, right? You have, you have some gold, no? So the question is, uh, either we choose the Litecoin, the Bitcoin, I have Bitcoins, or Ripple, Ripple, you know, is like this. Uh, it's very, very hot, very hot coin now. What we're going to do today is, uh, yeah, it will be cryptocurrency for beginners, right? Ah, we got the presidential alert that crypto stands for cryptography, not for crypt not for cryptocurrency. It's the common mistake in Silicon Valley. Uh, when whenever you say crypto, it's uh, people think that it's about cryptocurrency, while you know crypto is about cryptography. My name is Marcin Krzyzanowski. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. I have a blog, and you can find me on a GitHub with the same handle. I work for the PSPDF kit, uh, where we build. PDF framework for iOS, Android, <coughs> and web. I work on the iOS team. Uh, the, the framework is paid, but we have a free application, PDF Viewer. You can download it from the App Store. I encourage you. Uh, I have a GitHub, and on the GitHub, I have two projects that I, I want to mention. There's a, this is the Crypto Swift, and this talk is based on, the crypto, on, on my work on the Crypto Swift. Crypto Swift is an implementation of uh, crypto primitives in Swift. And the other one is Objective PGP, that is the implementation of Open PGP for iOS and macOS. Yeah, this is the Crypto uh, Swift project. Um, I don't know, I, I created it like four years ago, and people start using it, so I maintain it. I don't know, does anyone? Now this this framework. Okay, yeah, great. I have at least yeah, okay. <laughs> I have at least two users. Um, I will talk about encryption today, and I will uh, use some of the issues that were reported to Crypto Swift as an excuse to uh, introduce a new topic. Uh, over the four years, I had like 500 issues. And I closed most of it. Like 50% is about um, Cocopods, Carthage, uh, Xcode, and Swift versioning. Um, and really, just a small amount is a feature request and bug reports. But it all started four years ago when I created the repo. And yeah, I, I, I tweeted. <laughs> that was one of the first issue, and it was why. <laughs> yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, and, I, and I, I really didn't have a better explanation, like because I can, like everyone can, open source a framework and 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 build something. I build it. I I learned a lot over the four years. Oh well, yeah, over four years, and I will share some of the the knowledge I learned with you. Let's start with this one. This is the example of most common issue reported. Like, I had it two days ago, similar. It comes via email, I think. Uh, but the point is, I will, no. The question is, uh, I'm not able to encrypt value of string uh, because it's crashing, right? And does it work? Yeah, good. And yeah, 
string cannot reproduce from the encrypted array, and this is the, the, the code where he said, oh, this is the error, right? There's only two lines of code, and the error is in the second one. Um, but what's going on here? First, what is unsigned int 8? I wrote it. Unsigned int 8, it's a byte. It's most likely 8 bits. Do you know if it's always 8 bits? It's a tricky question. <laughs> but yes? Yeah. Well, historically not. <laughs> uh, but yeah. Uh, like historically, on a PDP 10, it was 7 bits. But uh, yeah, now we can assume that one byte is 8 bits. Uh, if you know C, there is a constant that you can modify and uh, change the length of the, of the car, you know, byte. So it, it, it can be different. But yeah, let's assume it's, it's uh, 8 bits. And st string can only be reproduced from encrypted, this array of bytes. So what he did, uh, he encrypts something, decipher is ciphertext, and try to, this is a Swift code, and try to uh, print out the result. Right? With the exclamation. So it will crash probably. And this gives the error because the string from bytes using encoding UDF8 is basically nil. Right? Do you know why? Okay, yeah. Two, okay, who knows why? Two, 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 two and a half. <laughs> okay, so. <laughs> you like it? Let's uh, think for a second how, what is a string? Let's say I have a string lorem ipsum, most common. So this is a string, we call it a string, it's an array of characters. Right? In English, let's say it, it, it's, uh, it's English. It can be rep represented as array of bytes, like here, right? So one byte second uh, and so on. Each byte can be represented as uh, as array of bits, right? Eight bits per byte. Then it goes to encryption. So it, the magic is happening, and we get the result. So after encryption, we have some some randomly looking uh, series of bits that we can change to bytes. Right? And eventually, out of these bytes, we want to create a string. Well, it may happen, but unlikely. Because what, what is string? Well, the string is an array of characters, right? Using some encoding. So it's not just an array of uh, random characters, uh, random bytes. It's not true that from the array of random bytes you can build uh, a string, right? The, you, you know, the ASCII has uh, 127 uh, characters, like for English language. So, and the byte has, may, may have value uh, 200, right? So what is the letter for that? Maybe it's not. Maybe it's, it's a, a new line or something, or, or some, you know, it's not a letter. That means, you cannot, you, you cannot assume that the result of uh, encryption is a string. And this, that was a problem. So he, he tried to get these random values, apply the UTF encryption, uh, encoding, UTF encoding, and expect that it will get a result. It's not, so he got the null. We should stay at this level, so the level of of bytes, and that that is the 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 problem. Encryption and encoding. I did the mistake uh, one minute ago. The encryp encryption work on the bits level, but let's say on the bytes level. So just get some bytes on input, shuffle that, and output uh, that you know as a cipher text. But encoding doesn't change the material. You still have, 
like you can encode string as bytes, bytes as string, and so on and so forth. Right? It's just uh, interpretation of data. You, you can see that, but as an example, I, I saw base64. You are familiar with the base64 represented? You know, it's a base64 is a, you use 64 letters to represent any any values. And there's a hex string representation. It's just hexadecimal. Uh, string of bytes. Okay, so what is the encryption? Uh, well, encryption is the method to uh, hide some data, right? If you need some hide, hide some data, you use encryption because you have something to hide, like tabs or something. But historically, we since 200 years ago or something, we know the best method to encrypt data using the one-time one, uh, one pad approach. Given the key and the text we want to encrypt and do something between these two values, we get a cipher text, right? If the key is random, like really, really random, and the plain text it's just your data. You will get the cipher text that nobody will able to crack. But the assumption here is that this is random. This association is unique. So it doesn't mean that A is L always, because here it will be A, and it means M. That's fine. And the key is as long as your plain text is. Well, yeah, in theory, it, it works. It may work, but nobody used that this way. Uh, you know, really, really hard to manage uh, that long key, right? So we come up with something better, we think. And those are ciphers. There are two kinds of encryptions. And uh, algorithm ciphers you can, uh, you can work with. The one kind is uh, symmetric key encryption, symmetric key encryption ciphers. What this symmetric key uh, stands for? Well, it's all, it stands for both sides, encryptor and decryptor, use the same key, share the same key, right? The idea behind the ciphers is always the same, is XORing. You know the XOR operation? Exclusive R. Logic operation, you may remember or not, from, from school. Why XOR was chosen? Because there's a, only in XOR, there's a 50% chance that uh, for the given pair of the input, the output is 0 or 1. Right? Nothing is uh, fa in favor. None of the pair is in favor. Like if you if we you see the and operation or or log logical operation, well here is a zero in favor, here is one in favor. So you could you could uh, use that information to to crack the code, but with with XOR it you don't know what happened, right? What was the pair on the input? The another type of uh, encryption is asymmetric key encryption, and this is the one you you may be familiar with um, RSA, right? It's private key and public key. Public key used to uh, encrypt data and private key to decrypt data. And mathematically, it's based on, on, on the fact that math is hard. Some of the operations uh, are hard to uh, perform in a short time, even for the computers. So, uh, so yeah, we can have these two numbers, because you know keys are just the numbers. You can have these numbers and some equation and to solve that, it takes uh, uh, a lot of time. I will, I will not focus on that one. I will just focus on the symmetric key today. Uh, how many of you is iOS developers? Oh, okay, so you may be familiar with that. You know Common Crypto? Common Crypto is a system library. Uh, to a system library with the, with the, with the um, crypto primitives. And if you, let's say, have a task to encrypt a message, you Google that, 
and probably one first or the second will be result will be from Stack Overflow, and you will find this. Like specifically, there will be a, a sample of using CCCP crypt, right? It has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Right, eleven? Yeah, let's say eleven, eleven parameters. And you have to be very careful what do you put put here, because misuse will uh, basically break everything. What do we have here? It doesn't matter. It's encrypt or decrypt. It's just a type of operation. Next algorithm. Well, you have to choose a yes. Yeah, a yes. You may have heard of it. A yes is uh, stands for advanced. Yes, asymmetric encryption system. Yeah, yes. Yeah, it's it's a very good cipher, very well known, uh, award-winning, and mathematically proven to uh, to be secure, but it can be misused. Let's say we go with the AES, and 128 is the length of the key we will use. Next is padding. Well, yeah, you just copy paste, so you you just use that. Then it's a key. So you will probably put your password here. And there is some IV, but after the second, you will figure out that you can just null here, right? It will work. And the rest it are uh, just uh, buffers. So you, you, you have a solution. Uh, this is the, the Swift version. It's not, not, not really better, <laughs> because you have to deal with these row pointers and stuff. So. Uh, yeah, and um, the CC crypto create with mode is slightly different method from the same framework, and it additionally has this parameter uh, block mode. Yeah, so we, we have like one, two, three, four, five, five parameters. We have to decide what to use to encrypt the hello world text. Just for the record, this is the crypto suite version. It's the same, even though the, it look maybe look uh, nicer. Still needs these parameters to be to be choosed. Okay, so first we we, we decided to go with the AES, and this is the good choice I could recommend. But you can use the different uh, ciphers as well. But yeah, let's say the AES will be the good choice. The second is a cipher mode. Oh, God. You re don't really know what to do about that, do you? What, 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 what cipher mode would you choose? What is the default one? There is a default one. Yeah. So let's look at the cipher mode. There are two kinds of cipher modes. A stream mode and a block mode. You know what a stream word means? It's a stream, like a river. You know? And a block. It's a block. You know what the block is, right? Stream. <laughs> uh, when it comes to stream block modes, there are several that are uh, designed for, for the cipher. I will name just four. Like CTR, the most common, common called counter mode. OFB, GCM, CCM. What it does, it allows the cipher to work with the stream of data. The stream of data is just arbitrary length of data on the input you want to encrypt. So if you want to encrypt one bit, uh, even one bit, one byte, two byte, six byte, uh, in a different with a different chunks of data, yeah, choose the the stream block mode. And now this block doesn't fit here. But what is what this type, this mode is doing, it makes work the block just like stream. I know it's magical. <laughs> but yeah, I would go with the CTR or GCM or CCM if it is uh, available for your library. Example how the counter mode works. 
there's a, there's some input data, key, some magic, XORing, and go cipher text. One, another, another. Each of these operation can be executed independently. So you can encrypt if the library allows for that. You can you can encrypt uh, larger message in chunks independently. And the another type is block, block mode, block mo uh, mode of operation. This is the IES is a cipher that works as IES is a block cipher. That means IES is designed to encrypt at once a single block of data. It, it by itself it cannot encrypt one byte. In all, it always encrypts 16 bytes. That's how it's designed. And uh, most common is CBC mode. And this is the default. Well, it's, it's default in the common crypto and yeah, probably the other libraries as well. Mm, CBC, yeah. If you remember that, that's fine. And the other one you should remember is ECB, block dummy mode. The full name is elec something electro book, something like this. Doesn't matter. Don't use that one. Like never, unless unless uh, you have a protocol that specifically says here with this operation I need the ACB. Yeah, that's fine. But if you want to encrypt. Hello world will never go with that one. It exposes data, it's, it's really bad. Just example how, how this most common CBC works. There's some data, there's a key, ciphertext, and the ciphertext is input for encryption of next block, right? Each block is encrypted like, like, like this. That means uh, you cannot encrypt uh, data in the CBC mode independently, it all, because the, the output is input for the next block. You see this initialization vector here, IV, right? Do you know what is it? Like, I know. <laughs> Does anyone has an idea what the IV is? Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 IV is a parameter, basically. The other name can be, you can find, is nonce. That means arbitrary number that can be used just once. And here, I don't want to go into much detail. Mm, but depends on the block mode. The IV have to be random or not necessarily? Well, it's better if it's random, right? So you just uh, have to produce 16 bytes of random data and use that as a parameter. And it is a, it's a public data. So if you, have, if you encrypted you, your hello world, and this is a ciphertext, encrypted hello world, you attach the initialization vector to the beginning, most likely. So the decryption needs that information as well. And this. This parameter is the only thing that is random when encrypting with the symmetric keys. Everything else is pseudo-random. It's fake. Now, uh, IV is required for, for the CBC mode, right? It was on this diagram, one of the input parameters. You back to let's back to this uh, common crypto example, right from from the beginning. If we use CCP crypt, the default is CBC. It default to CBC. It doesn't say so, but it does. And if you put null here or nil, so you skip the IV because you don't know what is it. It will use the old zeros, right? It is very bad. This is a very bad situation. Because for the CBC, it's very important to never use the same IV with the same message uh, for the second time. Right? 
So the IV, if you uh, encrypt the hello world for the second time, you should use a different IV. But yeah, this is an easy mistake to do. And this, this, this uh, problem is reported to Apple, but they don't really care. The padding, that was the one of the parameter, third one, I think. You know what the padding is, what the word padding means? You can, you may, you can think of it. It's, it's the padding works like this. You have some data that you have to align to some size, right? And this alignment would be a padding. You have to extend, basically, your input to some, uh, some given size. The most common known padding mechanism. PK, I know it's PK, CS, seven or five, doesn't matter. Zero padding and no padding. The first one works like this. We have a text, but we have to fulfill the 16 bit, uh, bytes, right? So what do we do? Uh, miss, we're missing 12 uh, bytes. So at the end, there's always 12. Bam, 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 bam. When I decrypt, I just check the last byte, and I know I have to discard 12 bytes, and the result is just text. Zero padding is similar schema. You just put zeros here. But I don't recommend using that because, well, obviously, if, you, if plain text is text zero, right, you, you, you will not be able to distinguish between actual zero and the zero that you added, that you padded. And there is no padding. And sometimes you use padding, sometimes you don't. For the stream modes, you don't need padding, because the idea is to use arbitrary length of data. One byte, that's all. So no padding as a parameter. For the block base like CBC, well, you, you have to choose one of the paddings, and this is the PKCS7 is the most common, and I encourage you to, to, to choose that one. So we know what a padding is. You know what the padding oracle attack is? Well, the padding is a good, good thing. It really helps uh, to solve a lot of problems, but it also introduces uh, one serious uh, flaw. This technique, I, I will show you how it works. This technique allows us to decrypt message without, without knowing a key. You can, you can just get the plain text just like that. Uh, the variation of this technique is used in the paddle attack, and paddle attack, the, the TLS version up to 1.2 is vulnerable for the paddle attack. You know, this is the TLS, you know what the TLS is. It's SSL, TLS, a protocol in the web when you open HTTPS to secure data, yeah. Uh, this, is the this is the most common version that we use now. And everyone screams now, deprecate this version. We need version 1.3 that is uh, already uh, deployed on many servers. Because, yeah, this version has this attack is vulnerable for this attack and for like three other attacks. So basically, if you unlucky and you use HTTPS, or well, if somebody intercept uh, your data, your, site, your encrypted data can decrypt uh, can decrypt everything. How it works? Oh, that's easy, right? There is some unknown plain text we want to decrypt. There is some cipher text, so encrypted data. I intercepted uh, like two, two blocks of data. So I know this one, and I don't know the last one. The last one is, uh, is something I will figure out by asking the server, let's say I will call it a server, but it can be a function, by asking the server for some data. So I, I get the cipher text. I modify randomly first byte. 
and send it to the server. If server answer me with the uh, with the error, I go to the second byte, modify, to, really to junk, send it, and see what the server will tell me. Well, the, it, here, server eventually respond with the success. What does it mean? The cipher I sent is properly formatted. Oh, sorry. It's success, it will, be, it will res respond with error. Like here it was properly formatted, now it's not, so I know it's something happened. What do I know here? I know that the last byte, the last block um, is padded with the value six. It's magical. So based on that, you don't have to remember that, but it's, 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 I don't know, I find it funny. Based on that, I just, I don't care about this because that was the padding, and I change six to, six to seven, so I work on this byte. This is the last byte of the plain text, and keep sending, Keep sending, uh, it changed this value, keep sending that to, to the server. Server will report error. Well, but for some value, it will be a success, right? When I change this value, it affects this value. Now, it's not hard math here, but when the server responds me with a success, I can figure out what, this, what is this value because I know how the encryption happens. So in this case, the last byte of uh, plain text is 47. And this is how the, the, um, uh, the attack works. We don't know key, we just know the padding. Well, we figure out what the padding is. We know that the data is padded and we are able to decrypt the message. It's, it's quite fast because, well, there's just one byte for the 20, uh, 25, 6 uh, tries for each byte, so in a matter of seconds you, you get the answer. The only requirement is that the server will always respond to you. Right? There's no throttling, no blockage. Yeah, it's magical. You know what a magical also is? This is the new slide, because we changed it. This is, when I work on the, on the implementation of the primitives, uh, I read this, uh, these documents, and this is the document from the, one of the block modes I implemented, and you see, the, you see the notes? Yeah, I spent like a week doing the notes, and it's not working. So change the topic. Normally, and cryptography, you know, is very well uh, defined, it's standardized, cipher, each cipher works the same way. But in practice, when we work with the libraries of frameworks, uh, we encounter a lot of problems because there, are some impli there is some implicit work uh, added to the to to the encryption. Like here, there is a question why um, there's incompatibility between Swift and PHP, right? I, I didn't know the answer because you know the, the encryption should be always the same, should be always have the same result. So I reached to to the PHP uh, function and what it does? Yeah, it basically return base64 with the uh, three values. Well, if you don't know that, you, you might just ex expect the ciphertext. But there's additional data that are added to the output. Um, you just have to know that. Uh, either this is documented, what is the format of the ciphertext, or well, the, the output, output, or, well, you have to. The same situation with OpenSSL. You know, you can use OpenSSL as a library, that's one way, or as a command line, right? And if you use a, as a library, there's a lib crypto library, uh, so you work on the same level as uh, CryptoSwift mm, primitives. But if you work with the, uh, with the 
command line, but it's slightly different. It uses its own uh, format, like for this operation, the output is IV plus salted, this constant, plus eight random bytes, and at the end there's a ciphertext. What you compare is ciphertext. But you ha just have to know somehow magically that uh, the, f the output format of data is like this. So <laughs> when you output OpenSSL with OpenSSL, yeah, it's worked. But when you uh, try to compare uh, the output from uh, from this command with a library like CryptoSwift, well, you 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 don't know what's going on, and you, and you think and you report the bug basically. I don't know. Oh, oh yeah, CryptoJS. Do we still use a CryptoJS? <laughs> yeah, really? <laughs> okay, two, two. Okay, it's I don't know. It's common to use the CryptoJS now. Kind of. Okay. Um, is it maintained? I think I think on the on the on the repository site it's. Uh, there's a note from the author that, oh, I enjoyed it for a long time, but not any longer, so, oh, you know. <laughs> okay, so CryptoJS, uh, th there was a question, why, why the, the, the result of encryption is not, uh, not equal to what the CryptoJS does? And I had to look into the CryptoJS and see what's going on. So what's going on with the, when you, uh, yeah, when you just use the secret, put that to the crypto.js and get the output. This happens. Like here, this is the uh, crypto version. Because there, there is some implicit operations happens. One is it expect the password on the input, not the key. Ta da You know that the password is not the key? The password is not the key. You know, the password is just name of your pet. But the key has to be cryptograph has to be cryptographically uh, secure. And we have a method to do that. So yeah, back for, for the CryptoJS, uh, what it does, it transforms the, the, the password you are giving with some method, this method, AVP bytes to a key, and use that to, as a key for the encryption. Funny fact, AVP bytes to key is a function that was copied from OpenSSL. It is used to derive key from password, and OpenSSL no longer use that in favor of uh, another algorithm. But uh, I believe uh, CryptoJS just will stay with this. And it's, I don't think it's documented, so you, you just have to know that. Okay, but back to this magical password is not the key. The key is derived from the password. And we have uh, several functions that we can use or methods that we can use. Um, where we put the password, our password on the input, this is a magic, and we get the key. And that key is the input for the cipher, not our password. The key is the uh, input for the password. This key has a proper length as well. It's not the name of your pet, right? It will be 16 bytes or uh, 24 bytes or whatever. So key derivation function. The name you will find is uh, P B K K D F one or two. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> I know how it sounds. Okay, let's recap. We know the cipher. We choose the cipher. We know that the key is not the password, right? The block mode. Yeah, we choose the block mode. Like I choose the CBC here. The CBC needs IV, IV is random, and CBC is a block, uh, 
block mode operation, so I need the padding. Padding is PKSA 7. But there should be some. Yeah. Um, where to start? Is, is the message I encrypted and sent to you, is the authentic, is, is the message that was sent to you? Or it was modified on the way? Who sent that? Was it modified? Well, you don't know that, right? Because you just got the uh, ciphertext encrypted data and that's all. But there is a way. It's called MAC. Uh, MAC stands from, for message authentication code. Are you familiar with the uh, digests? Like SHA, MD5. MD, everyone knows MD5. Like at least from the scandal that MD5 have so many conflicts that you can have two different files and the same MD5 uh, uh, tag. So my authentication uh, code is a tag, and this tag is just a number. Just a number that is calculated out of your data. What does it provide? It, it gives you the authentication. It gives you information that uh, your data was not modified during the transmission. And it also gives you the information that was sent by the owner of the key, the shared key. You know, you, you, you still use the same key, but if only I know the key and Benedict know the key, sorry, uh, I know verifying this, uh, this number tag, I know that it was sent by him, not by anyone else, right? So mark message authentication code. There are several, like H mark uh, is just an example, C mark. You can see there's a key as a parameter. So together, what we send when we have encrypted data, we have an IV, this random data, our ciphertext, and at the end, there is a tag. It just checks, like, checks some, you know, something to, that will uh, verify uh, this IV and ciphertext. Yeah. The missing mark, or uh, if the mark is not calculator, calculated over everything, uh, is generally uh, a really bad decision. And if you remember or you read about iOS 9.2, there was a flaw in iMessage protocol. They uh, misuse uh, message authentication code, and it was possible to decrypt the messages in, in version 9.2. It was fixed in version 9.3. So the Mac is very powerful, but you have to really encrypt everything, not leaving out something. The key I share, you know, it's secret. So uh, how do you transfer key uh, to, to, to somebody without being intercepted or something? Well, normally it's very hard. You can send a letter, but yeah, somebody on the post can open the letter. This is where the async, uh, asymmetric encryption came into game and the Diffie-Hellman key exchange protocol, uh, algorithm, the protocol, I think. It's, it's, it's algorithm and it's protocol. RS, RSA, basically, you know, the RSA. It works like this. It has the public key, uh, the private key, public key, encrypt data, they put public encrypted private key decrypt data, and how do how can we use that to exchange our secret uh, secret key? Ah, it's first why. Because I forgot about something. Uh, asymmetric encryption is very very slow, so RSA it's uh, it's a slow operation. We don't use RSA to encrypt whole file. We just use that to encrypt the, the short session key that then we use to, uh, for, for the AES. So that's the trick. AES is very fast, and the RSA is very slow. Basically, but it's not like, this is the session uh, 
that, that kind of session happens when you establish HTTPS um, connection. So on the one side, you generate session key, you encrypt that session key with the public key of the, of the receiver. The receiver decrypts session key with his private key and use that key, this, this session key, to establish AES connection, like uh, encryption. That's all. That's the all magic. And yeah, th that's how it works, basically. OK. We'll wrap up. Yeah. There's a notes, you know? <laughs> nice, right? It's not mine. Somebody did it. And I find it interesting enough. Uh, I was talking about ciphers, that the cipher can be stream-based or block-based, so it works on arbitrary length of data or on a block of data. The most common uh, mode of operation is CBC. Just remember that. If not, it will be recorded, so you know. IV is uh, random data and should be just used just once. So it's not that you encode, you can put IV and it will be constant. It doesn't make any sense. Like, it should be really random. Password is not a key. So always use the, the function to derive key from the password. Padding, padding can be dangerous, as I, as I demonstrated. Mac will authenticate your message, and uh, RSA <coughs> is the method protocol to exchange keys. And that is all. Thank you. <laughs>